This tutorial covers basic theorem proving in Coq. We're going to focus now just on first-order logic. I'm not really going to show you how to prove very simple statements using very basic steps. So we're going to start with an equivalence that is known as the Frobenius rule. Let me state it first. So when you want to prove something in Coq, you say theorem or lemma or corollary, they're all synonyms. You give it a name and then you state it. So there are several ways to state this, but I'm just going to do one. Um, now, a theorem might be parameterized by certain parameters. So in our case, we're going to need a set, a propositional function. So prop here is just means that it's a proposition, or you can think of it as a truth value. So we need this. And now we can state the theorem. Oh, by the way, this is a mistake I always make. I forgot to open a file. So I'm just writing this into the wrong buffer. So let me open a file first. Like this. OK, here we go. Now it's nice and colored. Um, so yes, the statement is an equivalence of two things. The first one is that exists x in A such that q and p of x is the same thing as q and exists x in A such that p of x. You see here how to write logical connectives. So this is how you write conjunction. By the way, disjunction is like this. So this is conjunction. Exists is exists. And um, the equivalence is like this. So now we're going to submit this to Coq. I press Control C, Control N. It asked me to confirm that that was the executable I wanted to use. And down here you see what needs to be done. So the things above the line are the ones that we have at our disposal. You see that they are exactly the parameters of my theorem. And down here is what I wrote that I want to prove. So how do we prove this? We write proof, control C, control N to move forwards. Now it, Emacs that is not showing me anymore what I need to do, but with control C, control P, I can always make it display the current thing, the current goal. This is an if and only if. An if and only if is proved in two parts. You just prove implications in both directions. So whenever you have a goal that you know is going to fall apart into several goals, you can try split. This is going to work for, for conjunctions, it's going to work for uh, if and only if, and for others as well. So I split into two sub-goals, and it's presenting me with the first sub-goal, and it's just telling me what the second sub-goal is going to be, but it's not showing me what the hypothesis there will be. So here's what I need to focus on. This is an implication now that I'm proving. Um, so whenever you have an implication or a for all, Intro is the tactic that you want to use, or just intros. So intros is going to uh, take the hypotheses and put them in, into the context. The thing above the line is called the context. You see what happened? So watch again. So I move back and forth. So here I have an implication, and now this part here will move above the line. There you go. So it says, now I also have a hypothesis H, which says exists X, A, Q, and P of X. And I need to prove this thing here. So I need to prove this conjunction. So how do you do this? Well, think about how you would do it um, on, on paper. You would say, well, there is an x such that q and p of x. So there's something about this h that isn't quite right. It's packaged up in an exist statement. And we really want to take it apart so that we know that there is some x in A such that these two things hold. And the way you do that is you say destruct h, and this is going to take it apart into pieces. You see, but it took it into pieces, and then now, so now we have an x, such so that a holds, and we have h, this is a new h, which says q and p of x. Um, so now I would have to say destruct h again, to really get down to the basic pieces. Uh, an experienced cock user will see immediately that you can destruct h like this. 
he'll say, well, you destruct h into x, h1 and h2. Well, you know, this is the x, and this is going to be the h1, and this is going to be the h2. So you do it all in one step. You don't have to say destruct, destruct. Uh, it's not happy. Destruct, yes, it's where you want to say destruct h as. So you say what it is that you destruct, and here you give a pattern which tells it how to destruct. Um, you see, I'm not really... Okay, so this is how it's supposed to be. So when you destruct and exist, it falls apart into two parts. We're going to call the first part x, and the second part, which is this, we're going to destruct further into h1 and h2. So I'm destructing this conjunction. So now hopefully, yes, now I get everything. But you can do actually something better. Already when you write intros, you see here, I look at this and I say, aha, this is going to be my hypothesis. I see immediately that I will want to take this hypothesis apart. I don't want to keep it as an exist statement. I want to say I'm going to have an x and I'm going to know that q holds and I'm going to know that p of x holds. So you can put this pattern here immediately in intros like that. And now we get everything in one step. So now we say, aha, we have x, and we have this hypothesis, and we have that hypothesis, and we need to prove this thing here. One small improvement. Look, I have exists x here, and I have exists x there. So I have two bound variables which are called the same thing. So when I make this step, Cock automatically renames the second one into x zeros, just so that I don't get confused about this x and that x, because they're not the same. So I don't really like x0, so I'm just going to say here, well, call this one y, so that the other one is x. See, now it leaves it alone. So how do I prove this conjunction? I say split, because it's a conjunction, I say split. And now I get three sub-goals. The first sub-goal is to prove q, that was one part of the, of the conjunction, and this is just one of my assumptions. So I say, this is an assumption. And Cock will find it. It will say, yeah, really it is. And it will find h1 and it will use it. Now here is an exist statement. The way to prove an exist statement is you say, what is, what is the thing that you think exists? And so I say, well, the x that exists in this case is actually the y. So I say, exists y. It's going to plug in y. And it will ask me to prove that p of y holds. And so this is an assumption again. Okay, now we come to the second part of the proof, which is the implication going the other direction. We already know how we're going to use intros. My assumption consists of two things, q and this other thing. So I'm going to write here, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have h and I'm going to have another thing, g. But of course I can, I can actually decompose this g into two things. It means I have an x such that p of x holds. So here I will say, well, decompose this is to x and g. Or maybe let's, let's use h1 and h2 just like we did before. And now it falls apart like that. So h1 is the hypothesis that q holds. I have an x and h2 is the hypothesis that p of x holds. And now I have to prove this thing here. Okay, I'm not going to bother, well, maybe I will bother renaming this thing to y just so that I avoid x0. So now I have to explain to Cock where to get this x. And again, this is all very easy. I say exists y. Y, you should take x to be y here. So there we go. And it says, well, now you have to prove q and p of y. This I can do with split because it's a conjunction. And this is an assumption. And this is an assumption. And we're done. OK, but in reality, you wouldn't prove such a thing this way. It's too long. So let me show you a couple of things that you can do to make the proof go through faster. So first of all, let's return back to this point where we had to prove this conjunction. OK, so one of the things you could do is you say, well, I'm going to split this and I'm going to get two assumptions. So in fact, here I can say instead of split, I can say split assumption like that. This means split, and then for each branch that you get, do this. So it's going to split and try assumption twice, and then I don't have to write assumption here, and it's done. But in fact, this is so easy, 
that I can just say auto here at this point because Cock will see how to prove this and it's done. Let's try if auto works up here. What if I say auto and I ask auto to produce the witness? Now it doesn't do anything. See? So I have to provide the exists and then I do an auto. So similarly up here, well, let's leave it like this, okay? So this is my proof. Um, and I want to just show you one thing. You can, you can always check what things are. You say check Frobenius. Suppose you're in the middle of some file and you know there is Frobenius, but you don't know what it is. You say check Frobenius. I press Control C, Control N, and it tells me what Frobenius is. Frobenius is the statement that for all sets A, for all propositional functions P, and for all Q, this thing is equivalent to that thing. If I say print Frobenius, that's more detailed, I will also get to see the proof. But the proof typically is not very re readable. Okay, so the proof is a function, see how you, you can read the proof here now. So this is Frobenius. It's a function which takes a set A, a propositional function, and a proposition Q, and it constructs the relevant proof, the proof of this statement down here. Okay, the equivalence. So the equivalence is a conjunction of two implications and then it goes on here and so here's one and there's the other one. I'm not going to get into this. Just remember you can inspect proofs and if you're a machine you can actually read them or if they're very if they're very short you can read them. There is one other tactic which is very powerful which is called first order which is used for first order reasoning and whenever you have something that you think should go through just with first order logic try it. Ah, there, we're done. We didn't really have to do all of this. What proof was found? Ah, oh, it kind of looks the same. But I did not remember whether it's actually the same. Okay, so that's it for your first proof. And we're going to continue with a different Frobenius in the next part.